Hey, second insight. Good to see you back here. Um, so the first insight was a little long. There was a bit of an explanation about why the section fits and where it does. It's actually the appendix um, to section to the whole sort of thing. It, it, go watch it. You'll see. Anyway, we're going to go. We're in section 133. We've just done verses Four and sort of a little five and six and we're going to go down to nine uh, and this is about increasing the stakes and why you need to increase the stakes now steak here is not steak like steakhouse steak where you eat it and we explain that to a lot of non-members when we use our church talk and they don't know what we're talking about we say we're going to the steakhouse and they think we're going out for dinner which we often do at the steakhouse but it's more potluck than it is actually steak um <laughs> right <laughs> it can get confusing so um how do we increase our stakes? And why do we increase our stakes? Because to a lot of people, having a larger number is just harder to take care of, right? And anyone that's got kids knows that the more you have of them, the, the more work it is. Um, and yet somehow it isn't is at the same time because there's more people to do the jobs and, and help you out. Um, so that's part of increasing it. So you, while you can feel, why do we want to increase it? They actually, the bigger you make it and the more you have of it, the safer you have in numbers. And I think a lot of us definitely felt that when we couldn't go to church for so long. And then when we get back to church uh, from whatever lockdown or country that we're in, and we're able to go back and meet as a ward or even go to a state conference or a bigger like stake activity to feel that sort of wrap around love of everybody and I, I, I pray you feel that um you know like I, I'm quite happy to have church at home I, we have church at home um and it's not like I'm besties with everyone in our ward or our stake but to sit in state conference and have everyone singing with a common purpose listening to the speakers and like loving it even if some of them are sort of there to just be there but just to have that strength in numbers and the ability and the abilities of everybody there that come together to just create this beautiful thing so that's for me anyway so let's read it let's read it because we haven't even read it yet let's read it verse 9 says and behold and lo this shall be their cry and the voice of the lord unto all people go ye forth unto the land of zion that the borders of my people may be enlarged and that her stakes may be strengthened, and that Zion may go forth unto the regions round about. So the stronger is a people, the bigger the stake. So the bigger the stake, the stronger the people, right? Um, so in what ways can you go forth and help increase our stakes? Like, what are you doing? Is it all just about missionary work, or are there other things you can do, right? Because it's not so easy to do missionary work during COVID. Um, we can go online, we can do a lot of things, we can reach out to people, but it does become trickier. You don't have that spirit-to-spirit -spirit connection that you would have if you were teaching someone face-to-face. -face. It is harder. Um, but part of preparing, as we talked about in insight number one, is to strengthen others, bring, invite, and share the gospel. So, you know, invite, love, share. Um, whether they join the church or not, it's about showing them who we are and that they are welcome that they can choose to be part of us. Um, I give every effort to living the gospel and reflecting the light of Christ so as to help others um, because that's probably the best missionary work I can do. Um, as well as this, this is another example. But, yeah, sorry, something weird just happened. But, yeah, um, yeah, I, I do everything that I can to just live the best example, reflect the light of Christ, especially to my family. Because I know that I'm not going to be the one to teach, teach them the gospel. I teach them the gospel by the way I live. But they're not going to join the church because of me. It will be someone else that comes along and actually teaches the gospel to them. Um, but yet in the way that I live is also a way to do that. Um, so these examples are ways that we can increase our stakes. There's a lot of them. There's so many different things you can do. You can just let people know who you are, where you work. You know, that simple old thing that, you know, what did you do on the weekend? Oh, I went to church. It was really good. Or well, we had church at home because we do that. And they're like, you have church at home, you know, and it gives you that opportunity to talk. It doesn't mean that they're suddenly going to go, oh, I want that too. Maybe that happens. But it is a way to get that word out there and to let people know that we're not just a bunch of nutters and that we actually have good values that we spend time together um, because we actually like each other, um, you know, all those sort of things. Anyway, 
it increases our stakes. It eventually does. People do join the church because of good examples of members, because of the gospel, and because we speak it. So go do that. Whatever way that looks like for you. Um, President M. Russell Ballard, he said, balance your life with spiritual experiences that remind and prepare you for continued daily ministering to others because that's what it does. It's that continued daily ministering to others that will increase and uplift and strengthen whoever you are ministering to that will eventually, at some point, for some people, maybe next week, maybe tomorrow, but for most, it's going to take a while because that's just how it is now. Yeah, that's how it is around here. Most people know of the church, but they have misconceptions, so it's about breaking those. And if you can be that lovely, wonderful, ministering, kind person, it's going to change their perception. It's going to get them to realize and help them to see that it's actually a good thing to be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Pick the curiosity, get them interested, because that's the start, right? Okay, well, that was insight number two. I will see you shortly for number three. We're going to go to verses 27-29 and talk about the Lord providing a way, because he always does. See you there.